So obviously I know um, quite a lot about coaches care, but for those people that aren't aware, um, just briefly sort of talk to me a little bit about the project and kind of the idea behind it and stuff. Yeah. So Coach for Care is a peer-led coaching service for carers of people with progressive and terminal illnesses yeah. to help them to improve their health and well-being and sustain their energy whilst they're caring for somebody that they love. Um, the idea of the project came out of a year-long piece of research that was done with an organisation called the Innovation Unit um, who basically found that within end-of-life care, looking at kind of best solutions to end-of-life care, there was a real gap in terms of our understanding of carers' experiences in that journey. Yeah. Um, and what value they bring and actually kind of recognition for them. So it was very underexplored. They did lots and lots of research with carers themselves um, and professionals um, and basically found that carers needed a lot more support than they were getting um, and that caring for somebody that you love can be incredibly stressful emotionally, physically, um, financially, in all sorts of ways. It could be really challenging times. Um, and it could, incre- it could lead to, um, you know, people's an- energy being really sapped, um, and even a kind of loss of identity of the carer was yeah. really something that was identified. Um, um, so out of this, um, and out of lots of conversations with carers, came the idea that. Well, first of all, peer support was seemed to be a really, really valuable way of aiding this situation and supporting carers better. Yeah. But speaking to others who understood what it was like was really, really valuable for them. Um, but that sometimes these kinds of peer support groups could end up dwelling on the negative aspects of caring as right. opposed to helping them to kind of think through what positive changes they could make or um, even learn about tips and tricks and things that might help the situation. It tended to just be a kind of a space for people to just talk about the challenges, which is understandable. But what um, Innovation Unit thought and what carers themselves thought was that actually building in a more structured conversation which would allow carers the space to reflect on their experiences but then also make positive changes um, would be really valuable for them. So they trialled a few different approaches and it turned out that coaching as a kind of method approach in this instance of peer support um, actually worked really well and carers really responded to it well in the prototypes. So um, so yeah, so then it eventually was included in a funding bid and it was successful and um, so we've been trialling it since October right. 2018, um, like officially trialling it properly from, from then. <coughs> and um, yeah, so it's just based out of St Christopher's Hospice at the moment and the project involves um, myself as the project lead. Um, it also involves a steering group of uh, various senior managers at St Christopher's who all have an investment in supporting carers um, and kind of aiding education in the community. Yeah. Um, and sort of, yeah, like really building on how we might empower people in the community to support themselves as they approach the end of life or as their loved ones approach the end of life so it's kind of part of that piece of work as well looking at different ways we can do that and what education is needed and what support is needed and how we can kind of build those networks in the community um so that's a sort of broader wider ambition of st christopher's and other hospices as well really yeah um so 
yeah, um, since October, I don't know, do you want me to go on into the detail now or shall we, is that enough for now on the overview? Yeah, um, well, I'll just, no, you go on, you can carry on because it's good. I mean, I know sort of roughly what the, I came at the start and sort of the end, but yeah, I mean, you feel free to break down how it sort of, um, you know, the, the setup of it or whatever, or perhaps a bit about your, I know you said your project lead, but perhaps a bit about what your role sort of entailed, because obviously when I came down to the learning lunch, you were kind of leading some of the, the sessions and stuff as well, so I think you feel like your role is quite multi-angle, which is quite cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. So, um, so my role is primarily to just oversee, oversee the management of the project, coordinate um, the meetups, to coordinate um, introducing people to the programme, recruiting people. I do quite a lot of partnership work, so just going out and meeting different care organisations in our five boroughs right. across London, um, telling them about the project, you know, building partnerships with new channels of re referrals and recruiting for ex carers. Um, but I also facilitate um, part of the training, which we okay. do with Anima. Um, so how have you found that aspect, like the training aspect? Have you, has it been an aspect you've enjoyed? Yeah, I mean, it's been absolutely fantastic having Anima um, running the coaching training session for the two days. Yeah. Um, we've had just an absolutely overwhelmingly good response from people going on the programme um, about the training. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, it's been run like really professionally, really high standard. The rapport that's been created in the groups um, has been really, really great. And then it's been really long lasting. People have developed um, friendships and relationships during the training that have continued um, and they've carried on supporting each other. Yeah, and that's lovely to hear as well because one thing animus that we kind of pride ourselves on is the whole community sort of feel. So it's nice to come into something um, be part of something that you know is, is sort of external in a way to animus, but also have that community kind of vibe and feel to it as well. That's really nice. Yeah, no, exactly. And I feel like we've had some really, really great experiences with animus, and you know, I feel like I've developed some really good relationships with people from animus um, that have helped and really, you know, not just helped tokenistically, really given full energy and advice and support and all the way through so you know we can't be can't thank animas enough for that no no of course and, and that i to be fair it goes on to a, a, some of the questions i've got a bit further down the page but um i was going to say i know that ken and lillian particularly uh enjoyed like i love you know the work they did as part of the project and stuff um and i really enjoyed my involvement was great as well coming down to the learning lunch was really, was really cool so i think it's nice when everyone you know, from everyone that's involved has taken something from it and has really enjoyed it. It's nice to hear. Yeah, and I think it's also credit to the the value of the programme and what it's bringing to people because, you know, they, the reaction we're getting from people and the, the kind of support and enthusiasm and engagement from people that have taken part yeah. is so positive and I think that that really adds to the sense that it is a really nice project to be involved in because you can see the rewards that people are getting from it. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, so it, it feels positive. It feels really needed. Um, and, and yeah, we're getting really, really good responses from carers who have been supported through the programme as well. Good. Uh, that's, that's nice to hear. It's nice to have, hear that it's having that impact and so kind of coming back to um some of the stuff that i just wanted to know like some just some examples of what sort of things the kind of coaches and training that were part of the program you know kind of learned or you know some of the models that they might take away because obviously for the learning lunch you kind of went through a run for the book and there was quite a few things in there that were like models or things to you know practice or so just running over a few of them um would be yeah. So the particular tools that people have kind yeah of yeah I mean yeah to go into all of them but just some examples of some of the stuff that like they you know that they would they learn from the program that kind of they might then be able to take into their carer situations and, and apply yeah yeah so I think 
what's been one of the most kind of standout um, themes throughout the participants going on going yeah. forward for the program has been their own their own kind of personal development and transition from grieving ex carer who feels sort of a bit like floating around and not really having a sense of grounding yeah uh, and you know still quite caught up in their grief and struggling to people who feel like they have a sense of purpose who have learned um the value of just being present with somebody and not giving advice and not telling someone what to do but holding back and just listening i think that's been really really uh it had a really powerful impact on the people that have done the training themselves. Um, I think they've become a lot more um, self-aware and able to manage their own their own stuff and yeah. you know things with their, within their own networks and friends and family. Um, so yeah, so that's been a great outcome to see and yeah. really seen that in a lot of people. Um, I think the the tools have been really, really useful as well for a lot of them in their sessions. Um, just really simple tools like the Wheel of Life and um, looking at the whole week, getting an overview of someone's whole week and mapping where the highs and lows are. Yeah. Um, some of the simplest tools have actually seem to be the most popular amongst the group um, in just giving people a kind of pictorial representation of how they can um, self-evaluate and reflect on their week and reflect on how things are going. So those have definitely been really useful. Yeah, it's nice. uh, what I will say, I really love the way that all of the kind of resources and that were designed. Like the whole booklet thing and that was put together so nicely that mm -hmm. coupled with the stuff that it was providing, like the tools, it was done in such a way that it was so easy to do this, but, you know, uh, you know, appealing to look at that so it's, it's shout out to you guys as well because I think you guys put that all together didn't you? Yeah, so um, Ella from Innovation Unit who was involved in the design of the programme originally um, was primarily the person behind the beautiful handbook so yeah. I can't take credit for that <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I think that has made a real difference is having, a lot of them say like they just love having the book, it's like their Bible. Like, yeah, that's it, something to come back to, I guess, and keep kind of referencing. Exactly, and it's nice to just have a nice thing that you can refer back to, that's nice to look at, as you say. Um, and, you know, once through the training, once you do go through it with people, they do find it easy to navigate. Um, and you know, really useful to have that much detail of different part, different phases of the um, of the model. Um, so yeah, and I think we we recently had a focus group session with the with a number of the ex carers who've gone through the training and have used the book in in practice. Okay. And many of them said that you know they they really wouldn't change much about the book at all. They really liked um, the kind of brevity of it and um yeah it just found it like a really really useful tool in their sessions i think one thing they did say was that they they would like to have something that's maybe a bit more condensed so that when they're in their sessions they don't have to be flicking through the book so they could just have a sort of condensed overview um of the, the key questions to kind of ask to slow the conversation and you know just something that really quick yeah I guess that like, almost that, like flashcards like flashcards that sort of concept yeah yeah that kind of thing yeah so we're looking at designing something that, that will fit that kind of brief um yeah that's design. cool and so for you took like talk about you personally now what were some things that you took from the project or particularly enjoyed um because obviously like I said you had a role in lots of different aspects of it but what were some things that like, you felt like you took away from being involved in the project? Mm. Well, I think number one has just been um, having access to the training delivered by Animas those two days. I mean, yeah. I've sat through it now four times um, by two different people, and I've gained so much from being in those sessions and kind of being able to experience that training for myself. Um, yeah. And 
being able to then guide the group in, in ways and I found by the end I was able to kind of apply that knowledge to guide people a bit more than I was at the beginning so I think I've definitely picked up a huge amount from that um, personally and have applied that in my own life I've been sort of coaching friends informally when they you know what it's so, it sounds so familiar hearing you talk like this because I've been at Animus now for say like I don't know coming up to 18 months and I haven't I still haven't done the course yet I'm due to do it this year um, but I found the same thing just from sitting in on you know whether it be some of the training sessions or the intro days I come away and I think that's so interesting and I notice things that I say that are like kind of charged words and stuff like that and I, and I find myself kind of coaching friends and that without realizing that I'm doing it it's so interesting how it just kind of you take to it like that yeah yeah once you know it you can't really go back you're just sort of aware yeah you're down the rabbit hole at that point like there's no return <laughs> yeah exactly but I think it's been really helpful me being in those training sessions because it's meant that in between times when I am supporting um, the group and the ex-carers when they come to me yeah I have got that grounding to kind of be able to reflect back to people and at least reassure them when you know I think that they are on the right track and yeah um, of course you know guide them somewhat so that's been really really valuable and it's definitely yeah personally especially I do feel like it sort of opened up a whole new realm to me which I didn't know much about before so yeah of course and to be honest with you I mean if you ever want to come down to some of the animus lectures or that, just just drop one of us a line and we can let you know because they're all we have lectures like monthly or every other month, and they're always about some sort of something interesting. Um, so if you ever feel like you want to come down and listen to more of that sort of stuff, just let us know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. That was no, you're more than welcome. Um, what was I going to say? So I know you touched on um, the trainers and stuff, but uh, talk to me a little bit more about Penn and Lillian because I. I spoke to some people, I know Lillian did more of the training, but I spoke to some people that were sort of trained by both. And um, mm -hmm. I had a lot of good stuff like about Lillian's energy and sort of Ken was the flip side, the kind of very gentle, calm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, Lillian just did a, a tremendous job at building that sense of community with, amongst the members. Um, and I think just from the get go, given that we were running something completely new, like it was designed and it was prototyped, but this was like the kind of the first proper run through of a new coaching model that was designed specifically for this purpose. And she was able to just really confidently deliver it and um, just really lead the way, which was so, was so impressive. And I was so grateful for because, you know, it was new and, it, she got everyone on board and um, and yeah just led the way so it was it was brilliant um, having her and her style and her energy and her ability to kind of keep the group on track and um, and the vigilance I think as well to some extent of of reminding people that it's not about giving advice that it is about listening um, and really calling people out when they weren't doing that it was so useful to have that kind of standard set from the beginning yeah of course yeah and um yeah i mean i've been in touch with lillian recently as well and we're, she's sort of checking in to see how things are going um and we're looking at um arranging another time where she's maybe come and just see see everybody and see how oh, nice. yeah um, it's so nice when like it kind of continues it it doesn't finish when it, when the program ends it kind of continues the whole contact thing i love that stuff yeah yeah and I think also because Lillian's got experience working in prisons and um, lots of different kinds of people, different kinds of experiences, public services, social services, um, that varied experience has really helped, I think, as well, because she's, she's sort of, you know, she's seen it, she's seen it all kind of thing. So she's, yeah. you know, she was well placed for that, um, for that role be able to handle different kinds of people different kinds of abilities um and yeah just being able to kind of help everyone to have the best do their best be their best basically and, and really fulfill their potential in those sessions yeah that's great she's, she's great Lillian I love her she's so energetic <coughs> and well Ken, Ken was fantastic I mean he's only done one of them but 
he was really great at picking everything up and being really clear and straightforward with people um and he gave a really brilliant dem uh, demonstration that was quite long and i think actually having that um was really useful to the group yeah they really appreciated actually watching someone you know a professional doing a whole session it almost took about 30 minutes or something and um yeah just, i think so it was really helpful valuable having somebody else in a way as well because it allowed us to see what differences could, could be made what iterations could we be made what might be useful what might not be so useful like that kind of thing so that was really really great yeah um and then penultimate question i know you touched a little bit on it earlier but it's just again about how um obviously on our side you know me uh, lillian i know law when she came down enjoyed her involvement and robert and stuff um but how did you know how sort of beneficial or, or much did you enjoy the sort of partnership for support with Alamac and I, and I think we're doing this again right aren't we is that the plan um yeah so in September um Lillian's gonna come and do some sessions but also Rob is is continuing to give supervision at the moment so he's been amazing considering yeah. his um just been promoted I know yeah Rob's, Rob's the man like, there's no other way to describe him he's just the man I love him <laughs> He's, yeah, yeah, he's he's just his support has been completely amazing, and um, you know to have his professional wisdom and and knowledge um, on so many different things has been inspiring to the participants, and it's been amazing to have him on board all the way through and be so committed and you know just unquestioning about his support. It's just been fantastic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as a partnership, it's just been amazing the whole way through, really personal, really had a sense of just genuine, authentic, wanting to help, like, you know, um, just it doesn't ha hasn't felt like kind of working partnership in that sort of sense of like, business, business, like it's it's been really, really lovely and really organic and um, just really special to have Animas on board. I, it just couldn't definitely not have been the project it is without anima um it's really really added color to something that actually has been tried to some extent before in other settings and i think that it's interesting that this time round i think having animas's input has really kind of given it a professional edge in a really important way yeah. um and and kind of given it a slightly more focused element because there's, there's lots of things that have been done in the past around supporting carers mentoring guiding them but it hasn't been ex-carers doing it and it hasn't had the coaching element in such a kind of uh purposeful and structured way yeah and bringing that in has really has really helped this to really take off and have its own identity and, and be appealing to lots of people as well. Yeah, and, and it's nice. people who have like come from all sorts of backgrounds and really want to do the training, really want to get involved. I think that's really a, a large part due to the kind of professionalism we've had from Animas and the support we've had from them. Yeah, that's so nice to hear, and I can assure you, it's been a pleasure to to have done it. Like not just speaking from my experience but from everyone's experience so mm -hmm. it's nice because it does you know it's a genuine collaboration like mm -hmm. it's not a, like you say it doesn't feel like a business business it's like a two parties wanting to help people so it's, yeah. it's really nice mm -hmm. um and finally just to sort of summarize what do you what do you feel that the um coach for care program offers slash how can you know like how can it help not just people to deal with, you know, the difficulties of caring from the coachee perspective, but from those people, like you were mentioning earlier, that kind of, you know, do feel a bit lost to have something to offer as a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's that idea of um, equipping people who have, for whatever reason, you know, they've got experience to share or they've got something to offer, they want to help people um, and they've got a lot of value to bring but 
giving them coaching tools to be able to help others I think that idea in itself is just so so valuable and I'd like to see it happen in um oh, hello hello all right sorry I thought it was gone off <laughs> no 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 I'm still here <laughs> <laughs> On. No, um, imagine you'd have been here for like 20 minutes just talking. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have been. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think I think it has been so, so meaningful to a lot of, and I don't just think this, but they, people have told me, many of them have told me, ex-care is that it's just been so, so great having, feeling like they have a purpose again. Yeah. Um, and the, the kind of the development is continuing they've you know many of them have got really interested in, uh, now there's one of the ladies who um was on the first round of training actually did a course at animas recently because she was so interested in oh, really wanting to develop herself yeah it was, she's a lawyer and she did some something about emotional intelligence or something like that oh yeah 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 great yeah. intelligence yeah yeah, and um, many of the others have bought lots of coaching books and have you know, really rowing themselves into it and really want to kind of personally develop. And I think it, it's really credit to the fact that many of them are people who've really given a lot in their lives to look after other people, really empathetic, really caring people who've learned a lot and very mature emotionally. And this has just given them that kind of, stepping stone from which to or like a springboard from which to to grow even more as as people and they're the people in our communities that we actually really want to harness the energies of yeah of um, course and support and help them to grow so i think you know it's not just you know, like just, i mean i think it's great giving people coaching tools regardless in any situation but i think um especially for people who are ex-carers and have so much to offer in that regard and are so willing to just giving them the tools and equipping them and giving them a bit of training and so many of them are just flying like they're really making such a big difference um, so I think it's the kind of thing if it was scaled I think could have a tremendous impact on our society and on, on our communities and boy, do we need it sometimes when we look in the news and stuff. Oh, come on. <laughs> exactly. I think we do. And it's it's quite simple and it's like something that is empowering and it's it's uh yeah, it's like meaningful for people and they really enjoy it. Like why not do it more? <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. And it, it, it bewilders me so often when so many particularly in London, you know, I find London is can be particularly bad for it, but you're kind of walking around and everyone head down or no one wants to like talk and, and at how there is so little focus on just conversation and communication it, at times it's dumbfounding i'm just like that's the root of everything realistically like talking and language and communication that's that's what's at the heart of everything so how there's not more focus on that to solve problems is really confusing but hopefully with the sorts of things like this you know it, it will hopefully expand and, and make people more aware to it but I think the thing is, as well, Sam, that like a lot of traditionally support has always been quite a unequal power dynamic between professionals and normal folk. Yeah. And because of that power dynamic, um, it's meant that people who have that power institutionally as well as individuals have been reluctant to let that go. And the coaching idea is something that to some extent once you learn the tools and once you get the mentality like anyone can do and I think that yeah it's, it's that thing that it equalizes people's relationships more yeah um, and that's why I think there's been a kind of reluctance or at least a, a kind of delay in moving that way but actually now people are seeing that it can be really impactful and if you want to like to put it bluntly, save money um, within health services and that kind of thing, which so often are are kind of stretched by the amount of people who are isolated and they have low well-being, and you know where coaching and that kind of a support could be really, really valuable to people. Um, I think it could it could create huge savings 
across the health sector. Yeah, for sure. Um, as well as have a really great impact on our communities and and on people's well-being. Yeah, I agree. And let's hope, well, let's hope it continues to go that way. I mean, things like this and the projects like this can only do good things for things like coaching and, and society and stuff like that. So let's hope it catches on. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, I think that's all, you know, Anna, and I really appreciate the time you've taken to talk to me. Um, that's what I'm going to do is... Sorry, go I said, no, thank you. Thank you for... Oh. Really... No, no, of course. Um, we kind of talk about it passionately very often. <laughs> no, and do you know what? It's so, nice. It's nice, to, it's nice to hear, but also, the ho- again, coming back to the kind of conversation thing, sometimes... You think, uh, you can think all these things. That's amazing, X Y Z. But until you actually talk about it, you don't realise how galvanised it makes you, or how you know passionate you are about it. So it's nice to. I think it's always good to talk about stuff because you get a different perspective when you speak it aloud rather than just thinking it in your head. But um, yeah. it's been great. It's been very useful, and it's been a pleasure to chat with you as per. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will transcribe this. I'm going to speak with Lillian. Um, she's been a bit hard to pin down. I'm going to speak to her either later today or first thing on Monday. Mm-hmm. And then I've pretty much got all of the elements to start putting it together, I think. So I'll just keep you posted. And also, uh, do keep me posted, you know, if there's any yeah. more stuff with Coach UK, whether that be learning lunches or get togethers or anything like that, keep me posted because I like, you know, I've really enjoyed being involved and it'd be cool to come down and read yeah. with everyone. There were some guys that weren't actually coaching when I spoke to them before. So it'd be nice to kind of see. The journey that I've taken since yeah. I last met, etc. Yeah, great. Thank you, Sam. No, that's really, really helpful, and oh. I'll definitely let you know Perfect. about new things as it goes on. Great. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go, and well, hopefully, you're starting your Friday early. I've got a few bits left to do, but um, <laughs> have a great weekend, and I shall be in touch with you soon, no doubt. Great. And if you need any pictures or anything, do let me know because we had some taken recently. I just need to get the quarter marks removed. Um, yeah, I actually, I definitely will need some uh, photos. So there's no rush for it, but perhaps when you get some, you can like drop me a few over. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you're free to choose which one you think cool. would be best. Um, That's great. Thank you very much. All right, well, have a great weekend. Thanks again, and I'll speak to you soon. Um, yeah. All right. Take care. Bye.